Hey guys, it's Simon and welcome back to another part of the LibGDX Kotlin RPG tutorial series. In this part we are actually not going to code anything because I'm showing you something special which is not related to Kotlin, it's about the tiled editor. So we are going to close the IDE. Oh, disappointing. And the feature that I'm going to show you in this part, uh, which I learned uh, for two weeks ago, took me quite some time to figure it out, but I think it's pretty cool. And I think it requires a video to explain everything because at least for me, it was not very intuitive how to use it. And what we can do with that, so it's called auto mapping in tiles. And what we can do with that, you can pick, for example, any tile set. I will link this tile set in the video description below. I use that one instead of the one that we are using for the game because it uh, shows, or it, it, I can explain the things that I want to explain to you in an easier way with that uh, tile set. And as you see here, so it's a tile set with different uh, cliffs. So there is a cliff for a horizontal cliff, for a vertical cliff, for a cliff which is uh, bigger in height and width than two tiles. And then there are a lot of special tiles for different use cases with corner cases and so on. So it's a pretty good tile set and it sh uh, can show the auto mapping feature very Good. So when we draw something, we can pick any tile that we want. So that is then the power of how the auto mapping will work. Uh, we can draw some areas in a so-called cliff layer. I will explain that later on why this naming is important. We can also play just a, a simple cliff, then a vertical one, then with three, then with a length of four. The same with the horizontal stuff. And when we trigger the auto mapping feature, so there is a, a function in the map menu for, for you it's most likely called map not Karte this is German and then you can click auto map so control and M and then it will magically replace everything that we have uh, drawn so far with the correct tile so as you see here for a single cliff it used that tile for two cliffs it used that one and that one for three cliffs it used that one for three tiles uh, here. Okay, ah, actually that, that's interesting. So here there is a, a special case most likely uh, with the bottom of the map. So it should replace it like that. So there would be an error in the rules that I have set up. I, I showed it then in a moment. But yeah, basically that's the functionality that you can draw whatever you want. And then the rules in the background, so these auto mapping rules, they will then replace the tiles. And that saves you a lot of time and makes then the creation of maps very very easy or easier at least and also you can enable that the auto mapping is triggered automatically during the drawing so that you can also immediately see what kind of things you are drawing so there you don't need to press Control and m you can simply replace it automatically during the drawing process but i personally don't ask me why i like to trigger it manually that makes it easier to understand what kind of rules are applied and yeah so if you're interested in that then stay tuned because i'm going to explain that and we are making it uh, from scratch so we create a new map and also set up the auto mapping feature step by step Okay, so let's start with a completely new map. Let me close that one and let's create a new map. Again, there is a difference between if you choose a project or if you create a map. For the simplicity of this video, I will just create a map and not a project. But of course, if you want, you can use a project. From I never used a project so far, but from what I understood, it's simply some addition on top of the maps most likely you can bundle different maps together into a single project and the project also contains uh, some additional properties that you can set which also i will explain in a moment when it comes to a special property uh, there you can do something special with a project but yeah for, for this video just to demonstrate the functionality we will create a new map uh, i know it's a 32 by 32 pixels map everything is fine size really doesn't matter which often is the case in real life. Don't let anyone tell you differently, my boys out there. So we have an empty map here and we also need a new tile set. So let's create a new tile set. And there I will choose that specific graphic here. So this uh, tile set from uh, Treasure Hunters. So this tile set I will link in the video description. But the, the path to it is Treasure Hunters, then Palm Tree Island, then Sprites and then Terror. So if you want to choose the same one, and work together with me. Name of the tile set doesn't matter. We don't want to embed it. It's also 32 by 32 without any padding, margin and whatever. So everything is very simple. And let's create a new folder for that to store it there. So let's call that, for example, tiled YouTube. 
and there we store our tile set now first of all so now we have that here which is great and we also want to save our map so that we also go to our tiled youtube folder and let's call that the yeah, map very very simple and now if we would draw something so for example let's pick that specific tile let's draw here something and now if i trigger the auto map functionality so this control and m then we should get an error hopefully and we did that so it tells you i will translate it for you so there is no rules uh, file under the downloads tile blah 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 so it tries to look up in the folder where the map is currently stored so we stored this uh, map tmx in the tiled youtube folder and if we don't have a project, then it tries to look up a rules.txt file in the folder of the map. If we would have a project, then you can actually set the location of this rules.txt file. But since we don't use a project, it simply looks up in the same uh, map folder. And what is a rules.txt file? So that one is nowadays uh, pretty simple, I would say. It's simply a path to other maps, so other tile maps. And those tile maps contain then the different rules. And the rule is simply how should it replace, for example, that tile or that tile uh, with a different one from here. So the rules, what kind of tile replacement should happen. This is how you can imagine it, that this is also what we are going to set up. So first of all, let's remove all of that. And now let's create a rules file. So we were download tiles YouTube. And here let's create a new text document, which we call rules. And in there we simply, uh, we simply set the path to the different rule maps. Could be just one rule map, like uh, this is how we start, but it could be different rule maps. And we also see that in this part because we actually need the two different ones, but also that one we will see later. And what I like to do, I like to put my rule maps into a separate folder. So let's call that rules. And there, for example, I don't know, uh, let's call it just rules TMX, I think is the extension for tiles map, if I remember correctly. So let's also go there. Let's create a rules folder. And also in there, let's copy this map file and let's paste it in here and call that rules. Okay, so let me save that. And now when we trigger the auto mapping feature again in the main map, we get a different error. So yeah, so uh, wh what it says here, basically, which is also totally fine, that it cannot find the correct input layer um, and also no output layer. So basically the rules are missing in our rule map, which is okay because the, the map is empty. But uh, at least we already know, so it found the rules.txt file, so that is now working. And it also found our map, so the rules TMX. So that linkage between the auto mapping feature so between our main map and the, the rules that it needs to find for the auto mapping feature, that one is now working. So that's basically it. So that's the rules.txt file, pretty simple. And uh, if you want to have a second rule map, then you simply paste that here below. So there's always a new line and then the path to the new map. But for now, we start simple. We just have one rule map and that's it for now. Uh, one important thing that I want to mention is uh, when it comes then to exporting your game, from libgdx, then you don't need to export the rules.txt file and also the rules map. You don't need to export that to your char file or your APK file for Android, for example, because the, the rules don't really matter for your game. Then in the end, it's only related to tiled and it simply replaces, for example, here this uh, black tile with the correct tiles from the tile set. And that's it. So there is no dynamic stuff happening when the map is loaded. Um, all the things are happening in tiles and when you save then the map, then simply the correct tiles are already stored in the TMX map. So that's why you don't need to export the rules.txt file and your rules map. You can leave that out to save some uh, space in your final game. Good, then let's come to our rules map. So let's open it up. So tiled YouTube rules and then our rules map, which is also empty and quite big, but we can resize that later on. And uh, what is important, so a rule in the past, so th this is also something new, I haven't mentioned that yet, but we are using tiled uh, 1.9.2. And this feature, so the auto mapping feature got revamped, I think in 1.9 or 1.8, something like that. So in the past, it was a little bit different, in my opinion, even more complex to set up. But now with 1.9, once you understand how it works, I think it's pretty straightforward then how it works. 
And uh, what, what it always does, so basically it checks for uh, rules and how would you define a rule. In the past it was like that, you needed to define uh, three different layers. Let me quickly show it to you because I think that the concept nowadays is still the same and it's a little bit important to understand. So we have a region, we have an input, there is uh, more to that than just that, and there is an output layer. So the region in the past defined, so in what kind of area, uh, what kind of area defines a rule. So for example, if we would draw uh, something like that, then in the main map, if we would draw something similar, so let me quickly erase that, if we would in the main map now also draw something like that, then basically this rule, so this little triangle here, this rule will be found in that area here because there is also a triangle and then, so this is the, the region, so the region is like the, the form that it tries to find in your main map and tries to apply then the rule to it, so for example the triangle form here or it could also be just a, a single tile and then it comes to an input layer, so there it then checks what kind uh, of tiles define the, the input, so it tries to find if you leave it empty then it doesn't matter, so then whatever tile you place in the triangle it will simply replace it with whatever you define in the output, but you can also make a very uh, specific rule, so for example if the input looks like that, so that means it must exactly match those three tiles and then in the output you define what kind of things uh, it with what kind of tiles it should replace it. So for example, let's say the input is exactly that triangle with the three uh, black tiles and the output should be then, for example, that one. So this is how these rules are basically working. There's always a region, this is like the, the form uh, of, of, the tiles, uh, of the tile layer that it tries to identify. Then when it finds one of these specific forms, it will cross-check it with the input. So if there are tiles defined, then it really tries to, to match those specific tiles that you have specified, but you can also leave it empty. Uh, and when it's empty, then it simply means whatever tile you use from the tile set, then any of those will match. And then finally the output, and the output then defines with what kind of tiles it will replace the input. So this is an important concept to understand, the region, the input and the output. And uh, Nowadays it's a little bit simpler and uh, I like that you can basically skip the region layer because the input itself already defines the area usually with uh, something new that they have introduced. So there is now a special tile set for auto mapping rules. So you can add that to, to your map like here and there you can then see there are now five special tiles. I will explain them uh, from left to right and I need to open up the documentation and with those five tiles you can then define the input layer very dynamically and with that you automatically have the region as well for a rule and the only important thing is then the output rule, so what kind of tile should it replace and maybe if you don't want to have a, a generic rule, so with those ones then you can also uh, match for specific tiles. That, that one I will also show to you. But first of all, we start with the basic rules and there we only need those five uh, special tiles here. And what are those? So first of all, I will also add the documentation in the video description, don't worry about that. So with 1.9 there are five special uh, tiles from left to right. The first one is, uh, it represents an empty tile, which means uh, it's part of the region, so the part of the form that tile tries to find uh, for the rule, but it must be an empty tile, so nothing must be there in that specific cell here. Um, I think it makes then more sense once we have applied the first rule, then I think it's easier to understand. Then ignore, that's the next one with the star. Um, this is also important to understand, let me uh, remove that one here. So a region is always a combination of uh, adjacent tiles, so meaning that, for example, this is one region, so this will be one rule and if you would leave out the middle part, so if you have it for example like that, then it would be actually four separate rules from what I remember. So that won't work and to connect those together so that you have a rule for a plus, but uh, the, the middle tile for example does not really matter for your rule, but you s still want to combine the, the region into a single region, then you would place that special 
uh, wildcard here to connect those four tiles. So a form always needs to be a connected amount of, of tiles, let's say. Okay, then non-empty, uh, it's like the opposite of empty, so it's just any tile from your tile set, so something must be there for the rule. And then other and negates, I let you read that through because I've never used them and uh, <laughs> it's also not so easy to understand for me what they really do. And yeah, as mentioned, we, we don't need them, but uh, just that you know it, there are two additional special cases, maybe for very, very special uh, scenarios, but we don't need them. So for now, we can simply ignore them. Good, then the next thing, so input and output, how does that work? So as I have mentioned, and also the error that we got uh, in our main map is that the uh, tiled wants to look or uh, apply those rules to a specific tile layer. So it does not simply apply the rules to all the layer of your map that you have. It applies them to specific layers. And therefore there is some naming convention, which is also mentioned in the documentation. And for our case, we just uh, call them underscore cliff, for example. And this underscore and then the name afterwards, this one defines in what kind of layer it will apply those rules. So since we called that now cliff, then in our main map, we also need to rename that to cliff. And now the rules that we have defined here will be applied in that specific cliff layer. We can have multiple cliff layers, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And uh, it will apply them in all of those. And there's also special naming conventions. So you can just apply that to a specific cliff layer. You can apply that to non-cliff layers. So yeah, th there's a, a lot of things and a lot of functionality when it comes to that naming. But for us, again, we keep it simple. So we just have an input cliff and an output cliff. And that means that in this cliff area here, or in this cliff layer, it will apply our different rules. And for now, we also want to start with a very simple rule which is simply one specific tile and that one we want to replace. By the way, now when I press the auto mapping feature, so control and M, you see we get this star here because tiled uh, applied the rules, although it did not change anything, but uh, it's already working. So it's already found the correct input and output layer here. So the setup of the rules file is correct, but currently it does not contain any rules so nothing is happening. But the basic setup is now complete, let's say with the auto mapping feature. And now we need to add the different rules to it so that it does something for us. So the way I work with these rules and uh, how it worked for me is that I set up 16 different rules. And why is it 16? You will see that in a moment. So the way I have imagined it is that when I draw something or when I place a tile, so let's go to the input layer uh, or not to the main map. So when I draw something, so like here, then to know what kind of tile it should use from the tile sets and what kind of thing it should uh, replace here, it needs to check four different tiles around it. So from the top, left, right, and bottom. We don't care about the diagonal uh, tiles or so the top, right, top, left, and so on. They don't really influence the tile here or they, they don't do that. So that's why our rules are always in the form of a plus. And it will then check, so what kind of tiles are top, right, left, and bottom. And with that, it then places in one of those specific tiles here. And uh, you will see now in a moment that there are 16 different combinations. So what what can those, how does the, the tiles around the, the center tile look like? There's, there are 16 different combinations. And with that, we have already our basic setup. But to show you now one rule, so we will come to our rules file and to the special auto map rule. And there, let's say, so the first rule would be we have a we have something in the center, so there we don't care. It's any tile from our tile set, doesn't really matter. Uh, we need to be in our input layer, that's also correct. And around our tile, there are four empty tiles. So nothing is around our tile. And what should then happen? So in the output, that does then mean that would be that specific tile. So if there is nothing around the tile, then we have a single cliff and that would be that specific tile. And uh, another rule, for example, would be that we have, again, our tile in the center and then there would be four different tiles around it. And in that specific case, it would be this dark tile because there are other tiles already around it, so non-empty tiles. So in that case, we want to have our black tile here. And uh, here also something to note. So how does tiled know when does a rule start and when does a rule end? 
So there, as mentioned, um, a rule is defined by a region. In our case, it's always this plus form. And if there are empty tiles between two tiles, so like here, so there is an, an empty column, let's say, then tiled knows so a new rule will start. So this will be one rule, then there is an empty space, then there will be another rule, then an empty space, then the next rule. Um, and it reads that from what I know from left to right and from top to bottom. So it goes down that direction step by step or rule by rule and applies then those rules to the main map. So yeah, so let's try that out. So now we have a very simple setup and what what should now happen? So when we place now uh, a single tile and nothing is around that tile, then when we apply now our rules, tada, it added now that specific tile here because we have a single cliff. And if we would have now that rule, so we have uh, something like this, let's say. And then in the middle part now, because there is already something, now it should not place that specific tile in here. And it also does not do that because now our second rule is applying so that it replaces whatever it is there with a black tile so that we also see that this is working. Let's place in here, for example, this tile here and with the auto mapping rule, it replaces that one now with the with the black tile. So this is how it is working. And as you see now, so these are already two rules. And as I have mentioned, there are 16 in total because we can simply go them through step by step. So those are for me the, the simple rules. So everything around our center is empty and everything around our center is not empty. So those are two, rule, uh, two rules. Then the next one would be that there are three non-empty tiles around our center. And there are in total uh, four of those rules because how can it look like? So there can be three non-empty cells at the bottom, then three non-empty cells to the left, three non-empty cells to the top, and three non-empty cells to the right. And just a single tile is an empty tile. So those would be the next four rules. Then the next combination is that there are two non-empty tiles around our center tile, and there are in total six combinations for that. So let's again draw our six center tiles. Okay, and what kind of shapes can we get there? So let me zoom out a little bit. So there are two non-empty tiles in that corner, then for example in that corner, then that one and that one. And then we can also have the opposite direction. So from left to right and from top to bottom and everything around there is then empty so that we get again our plus signs for the drawing and for the rules applications. So as you can see here with two non-empty tiles around it, you get six rules in total. And finally, so that would be the, the last rules. There is just a uh, one tile is non-empty around our center tile. And there we have again just four rules. So it's maybe top, right, bottom or left. And everything around that uh, is empty. And those would be our final rules. And the only thing that we need to do now is define the output output cliffs here. And also, as you see, the map is a little bit big, so we can also uh, shrink it down a little bit because we don't need uh, more space than that. So let's resize that, that, we al that you also see that functionality for once. So we reduce the size a little bit. I think 26, maybe it's 25, yeah, it's 25. I can reduce it one more and with the height we can also get uh, a lot smaller actually not bigger so let's also go down there like that keep a little bit of space because uh, we want to add some uh, special rules here as well we see that in a moment so let me fill in the correct uh, tiles for that and then show it to you okay so that would be it so just that you can compare it so if you did it for example yourself for, for trading then uh, again, so those are the 16 different rules, so the 16 different combinations that can occur when we want to apply a specific rule. And the output with that specific tile set uh, would be that one. So if there are some tiles, for example, left, right and bottom, and there is nothing at the top, then we want to have that specific tile. So that would be the top of the cliff or other way around. 
So for example here, if there would be something on the left but nothing on the right, then we want to have that one here, so the right edge of the cliff. Or here, if something is at the top, then we would have the bottom edge of the cliff, and so on and so forth. So there you have the different rules with the two non-empty tile sets. We get to the different uh, corner pieces, so the different corner tiles that we have. Uh, also with the single pieces, there we have this vertical and horizontal single pieces of the tile set. And with all those rules are ready, we should now be able to draw the different cliffs correctly if I did not do a mistake. So let's try that out. The single cliff, then the length of two, length of three, length of four, then also in the uh, vertical direction, then also the big cliff with nine by nine, and now apply the rules and looks good to me, so looks perfect. We can also now draw uh, more complex shapes and there you see already certain things. So for example here, that black tile does not really look that good. So it would be better if it uses, uh, let me quickly check. So we want to have maybe a green piece. Yeah, it looks like, for example, that specific tile would be better if it places it in here. But currently we don't have a, a rule for that because we simply set up the, the basic rules uh, for the normal uh, forms, let's say, that can occur. But of course, in very special scenarios, you could still have uh, special tiles that you want to replace there. And this is then the advantage of the auto mapping feature, because there would also be another functionality, just that I mentioned it, which would be the terrain set. And uh, for the love of God, I couldn't figure it out how it works now with tiled 1.9. It's a lot more complicated, in my opinion, than it was in, in the past. Um, just to show it to you, so when you are on a tile set, you can now create three different uh, terrain sets, the corner, edge, and mixed set. And when you create one of those, uh, you need to mark the tiles in a very special uh, way. And once you do that, then you could go to the terrain set tab here, and then you can also start uh, drawing something. But as you see, it does very weird things for me and I couldn't figure out how it works. But basically what you would get out of that feature is what we did now, in my opinion. So when you have those 16 uh, different rules set up, this is basically what you get with the terrain set functionality. Of course, if you have different terrains, then it would figure out how they uh, flow together when they are next to each other and so on. So there's some uh, additional bonus, of course, with that functionality. Uh, but again, it's limited, in my opinion, to those 16 basic rules. And when you would have something special, like we, for example, we want to uh, replace here that specific tile uh, with a different one, then that won't work that easily with the terrain functionality. So the auto mapping functionality is uh, a lot more powerful. And uh, let me now draw here, for example, a plus so that we also have now a special rule that you have a, an example for that as well. So we want to replace now that dark square here. So this dark tile with the correct one, which would be, um, I think, one that one here. Exactly. So how would that work? So now we have the, the basic rule set up and tiled will correctly replace that. And the way I imagine it or I want to work is now that once it has replaced the different shapes and now if it finds a shape like that one here, then I want to replace it with the more specific tiles. So what I do here, I simply copy, I mark the shape and copy it. Then I go to my rules file and say, uh, okay, so this is now my input. So when it finds this combination of tiles, then in the output, I want to replace one specific tile. So uh, let me find it again. Which one did I pick? That one here. So in the output, I don't care about the four tiles on the top, bottom, left and right. So they should remain the same. I just want to replace the middle piece. So in the output, I will just place that single tile. So that you see it again here. So the input is that region here. So again, this plus form and the output is just a single tile. So with that setup, it will replace just the center piece of uh, that specific form. And when we come back now to our rules map, now when I apply the rule, we will see, tada, it correctly filled in that specific tile. So we identified uh, or we created now a special rule. But the problem is if I apply the auto mapping feature again, it removed the tile again. And why is that? The reason is that tiled will apply all these rules here 
I think it says concurrently, not sure what it means with that, but basically it goes from top left to, to bottom right, as mentioned before. And when we apply the rules the first time, it will find one of these uh, plus shapes here. And in that particular case, it finds uh, this rule here so that there are four tiles around it. So it will place in here the black tile. And then when we apply the rules once more, it finds that special rule here and fills in the special tile. Now we run it again. So this rule no longer applies because the input must be with a black tile, but we replaced it with the special tile. So it jumps back to that rule and throws in the black tile again, hmm, which is very bad for us. But luckily there is a pretty simple solution. And the solution that I chose here to fix that is that I simply split up the rules. So let's quickly uh, copy and paste the map and let's call the second one, for example, uh, rules special. And the other one, let's also rename that to rules basic. I need to reopen it then because that path is no longer valid. And in our rules file, we can now define the order in which the rules are applied. And first of all, we want to run the, the basic rules. So this would be the first step of our auto mapping functionality. And once it has replaced all the, the basic tiles, then we want to run our special rules and replace uh, whatever special combinations it will then find. And uh, yeah, let me quickly close those uh, rules here and open up the new rules file. Okay, so in our case, uh, we have now two files, so the basic rules and special rules. And as mentioned, so the basic rules are really just the 16 rules that we have here above. Everything else we don't need. So we can um, reduce the, the size or the, the, the height actually of our rules map. Let's check it. So like that. So this is everything that we need. So those are our basic rules and the special rules come then afterwards. So in the second step and there we can now simply throw away all the, the basic rules that we have. So let's select both of our layers and throw them away. And let's also move that specific rule up here so that we have then enough space for other rules. And now that problem with the toggling should be fixed because now the auto mapping functionality First of all, because we have defined the order like that in our rules file, first it will run the basic rules. So it will replace the, in our uh, special scenario with the plus, it will replace it with the black tile. And then in the second step, it finds then that specific form here. So the input cliff, it would then look like this. And when it finds something like that, then it replaces that specific tile in the center with the correct one, with a, with a better one. And now when we come back to our real map, when we run now the rules, it still replaces the black tile here with the correct one. And when I run the rules again and again and again, it does not toggle anymore. So now it's working correctly because of this two-step uh, ap approach with applying the rules. And yeah, also when we now would say that we want to apply the auto mapping during the drawing, that also should now work correctly. So we can now draw here everything around, create our awesome cliffs, whatever we want to have. And as mentioned, so if we want to have special rules, what I always do then here, so here, um, let's make one more example. Not sure if that is always the, the best approach, but one example would be if I find now, for example, that area here. So let's go again to our special rules, to our input. If we have an input like that, then our output should be differently because there should be, from what I know, uh, a better tile for that. So we want to have a grass corner at the uh, top left. Then we want to have, yeah, I think that one, right? Yeah, that looks good. So if we want to, uh, if we face that special input, then we want to replace the right piece with that specific tile. So that's it. Coming back to that, we should now see here that here, perfect, it replaced it now with another uh, tile. And yeah, that's the power of the auto mapping feature. So there, uh, for every tile set that you have, when you have things like that, you can set up the different rules and then you can draw and create your maps uh, a lot faster in my opinion. It's a really cool and great feature in my opinion. Okay, uh, and that's it. Maybe one final thing, if anyone ever finds out how this terrain functionality works nowadays with 1.9, then please let me know so I 
went through the documentation of tiles and f as mentioned for the love of god i cannot figure out how it works i don't know how to mark the tiles that i somehow get to the setup that i come here with the auto mapping functionality but to be honest i anyway prefer the auto mapping feature now more because uh, i have more flexibility and especially with the special rules i can also use then really sometimes very special tiles which are used in the different tile sets and it, it looks then a lot lot better which is great okay then i think that's it thanks for watching have a nice day and bye bye